this edition of Everything Home. I'm your host, Brian Domingo. Today on our show, we're going to take you back in time and do a little toilet training in our series, Toilet Training 101. Basically, what we're going to do in this series is we're going to show you how to remove and replace the inner workings of your toilet. And you might have a leaky toilet where it might be just a simple fix, replacing the flap in it. We'll actually show you how to do that in this series too. Whether or not you have the old style float mechanism in there that actually has a big float on it that goes up and down, turns the valve off and on. If you've got a leaky valve or a leaky flap, we're going to do an actual total rebuild kit we'll be putting in this kit. We're going to show you how to remove the tank, shut the water off, pull the tank off and change all the seals and all the working parts. We brought in our toilet that's got a cutaway in the back. It's going to be really easy to show you how to remove all these parts and put in the brand new ones. The first thing we're going to want to do is turn off the water supply to the toilet before we get started. So let's go down it's next to the left hand side of your toilet. Typically down there you're going to want to turn off the valve, turn it clockwise, that'll shut it off. And then we're going to show you how to take everything apart on the toilet. Okay, now that you have the water shut off, you're going to want to raise the flapper to drain the water out of the tank. You can either do that by just lifting up on the flapper, or you can push down the handle and use the arm. It's going to raise up the flapper, and that's going to drain most of the water out. You can also remove the flapper that usually just clips in on the side. Just want to pull that up, take that off, let the water drain out, and then disconnect the flapper from the arm. Now if you just have a bad flapper and it's a lot of times you'll get a lot of warpage around the side here so they'll start leaking and do a slow leak. At this point you can just put in a new flapper and then that might fix the toilet. Basically the new flapper is just going to go in. You'll take the new flapper. On this one you can see it has a ring that goes around here. But right here these are going to fit right into that. So you'll break the ring off of it and then the flapper will just go hook right onto that and rehook it back up to the arm and then you will have fixed uh, a leaky toilet that way. But we're going to go beyond that. Now you're going to want to, after you've gotten that off and the water drained out, you're going to want to disconnect the water line here that goes up into the uh, tank. So you want to turn that counterclockwise. Remember when you pull that off, you're going to have some water that's going to drain out. So put a little bucket or a piece of Tupperware underneath because you'll be having water come out here. Now that we have the flapper off and we've drained out most of the water of the tank, we're going to want to take off the fill valve. So underneath the tank, on the left hand side typically, you're going to want to remove that and it's usually a plastic nut that's holding that on. A lot of times it's on there a little tight so you might want to use a pair of pliers, loosen it up, and then you'll be able to just take that off by hand. Now remember there's going to be a little bit of water in the tank, so as soon as you start taking this piece off, you're going to have more water flowing out of the tank right here and that will be the last little bit of water in the tank. So once you get that removed, the nut removed, this should just be able to pull right out. You're going to have a rubber seal in there. You can see you pull that right out. Now that you have that removed, you have the rest of the water be drained down here so make sure you have a bucket underneath to catch that water. Okay, now we're going to want to remove the old handle. Off of there, we're going to be taking off this nut here. Remember that on the handles, the nut is actually reverse threaded. So it's not going to be the normal clockwise to tighten it. Actually, if you go clockwise with it, you're actually going to loosen this. So basically, you're going to want to spin that clockwise. You're going to loosen it up. that nut comes off, slide that off the handle, and then the handle is going to pop through here, and then come right out. Okay, now that we have all the water drained out of the tank, it's time to remove the bolts that actually hold the tank onto the bowl of the toilet. You can see there's two rubber washers up here. That's what keeps it from leaking down through there. A lot of times those will corrode. So what you're going to want to do is underneath there's going to be either a wing nut or a regular nut that's going to be securing that bolt to the tank. So typically on the top it's a flathead screwdriver you can get in there and then you're going to want to re remove the bolt underneath. 
and once you get the bolts released on both sides we'll be able to take the tank off okay as you can see now we've got most of the toilet disassembled we've taken out the handle we removed the flap we've removed the water intake all water has gone out of the bottom of the tank now we removed the two nuts that hold the tank to the base and now we can remove the tank off of it it comes off that simple now that we have the tank off you can see this is the seal that seals the tank to the toilet bowl itself you can remove that seal and we're going to want to take off this nut that holds that in place shouldn't be on too tight just loosen it up a little bit and we're going to remove this nut once you have that nut released you'll be able to pull that right through there after you have that done these are the bolts that hold the tank to the bowl you're going to want to remove these nuts that hold that Typically there's a washer and the nut and then on the inside that's where you have your rubber gasket and if it's spinning this is where you'll be able to put in a flathead screwdriver to hold that from spinning coming out. A lot of times this part of it gets so corroded that you won't even be able to get a screwdriver in there because it'll just fall apart and that's usually where you're going to find a lot of the leaks uh, from your tank. So we'll get this one off and then we'll show you how to put everything back together. Well, now that we have the tank totally apart, it's time to start reassembling it. Basically, we're going to reverse the order of how we just took everything off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to re-put in the bolts that hold the tank to the toilet bowl. Now, you have the bolt, you're going to want to put one of the rubber washers on there first. That's going to slide through the tank. And once you've got that on there, you're going to want to stick another rubber washer on. And then you're going to have your steel washer. And then you're going to want to put your nut on. And then we'll get that all tightened up. Now once you get it tight and snug, then you're going to want to tighten it about another turn, a turn and a half. You don't want to over tighten this because if you over tighten it, you're going to crack your tank itself. And you don't want to crack your tank because then you'll ruin your whole toilet. Alright, now that we have the tank bolts in and they're secure, the next thing we're going to want to do is put in the flapper assembly. Now you'll notice on this pipe, they make this pipe a little extra long because some tanks are a little bit shorter than others and some are a little bit taller. So what they do is they leave this a little bit long. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put this in place. We're going to dry fit this into the tank. And once we have it dry fitted into the tank, you're going to want to check your water line. And then you're going to want to mark the overflow on this. You're going to want to mark that on there and then you're going to take it out. You're going to use a hacksaw or a saw and cut that off. Once you get that cut off, then we'll actually put this in and secure it to the tank itself. Okay, now that we've got this cut off to the proper length, we're going to install this permanently. So there's already typically a rubber washer on here, and that's going to prevent it from leaking. So you're going to slide this one into place. Once you have it into place, it's going to come with typically a plastic nut that goes on there. And you're going to want to put that nut on there. And the same thing with this. You're going to want to tighten it tight but not overly tight. Because if you overly tighten it, you can still stand the chance of cracking your toilet tank. So once we have that on there, we're going to give it a couple spins. And get that nice and secure on there. Now that we have that on, we can place the tank, we'll be putting the tank back onto the toilet itself. Okay, now that we have the bolts in and the flapper assembly in, the next thing you're going to want to do is take your gasket the between the tank and the bowl gasket, and that's going to slide right onto your flapper assembly on the bottom just like this. And then once you have that on there, all you have to do is line up the holes with the tank. 
and slide that in just like that. Okay, now that we have the tank sitting on top of the bowl assembly, what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to this permanently. First you're going to want to put on one of the rubber washers, then one of the steel washers, and then a nut. You're going to want to do the same thing for the other bolt on the other side. And as you tighten this down, you want to keep this bowl as level as possible and not over tighten it. So what I like to do is push down on one side, tighten that bolt a little bit, and then push down on the other side, tighten that bolt a little bit. And once you get it really firm in there, then you can slowly tighten it up a little bit more with a crescent wrench. And just kind of go slow through one side, then do the other side and get that tank so it's mounted and it's nice and secure. Doesn't wobble back and forth and it's level. But you don't want to tighten it too much to where the tank is pushing so hard on the bowl that you could actually crack the tank too. Okay, now that the tank is firmly attached to the bowl assembly, we're going to be putting in the new handle. Basically what you're going to do is just slide the new handle through the hole, bring that around, slide it into place, then you're going to want to slide the nut along the end of the arm. And remember when we took this off that it's reverse thread. So you're going to actually go the opposite of tightening it. What would normally loosen a nut is actually going to tighten this. Once you get it nice and secure and it's hand tight, then you're going to want to probably take a pair of pliers and go a little bit tighter, about another half a turn on there, and get that firmly in place. Now that we have the handle in, we're going to attach the chain from the flapper to the handle. You're going to want to adjust the chain so there's a little bit of slack in it. Then you're going to want to cut off the excess piece of chain so it doesn't end up going down into the drain and making it uh, leak. You want to attach that onto the handle. And then you can check to make sure that it's working and pulling up enough for the water to drain down. Once you have that attached correctly, you can take off this little cardboard piece and then cut off this piece of the extra piece of chain. We're going to leave that on here because this is an inoperable toilet so we're going to actually probably take this out and use it on a regular toilet that will work so we're not going to cut the chain off right now. The next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in the fill valve. But what you might notice actually too is on the bowl fill we hadn't actually cut this off. We're going to save this part to put on a toilet that actually works but normally this is going to be cut off about an inch below where your arm hooks onto there because there's no gasket to seal that. So if the water level ever comes up above this, you're going to have it leaking out the front side of your tank. So this would normally be cut down about an inch below that line there. So it would normally be cut to about there. So now to assemble this, first thing you're going to do is want to put the rubber gasket on the bottom here. Once you get that gasket on, all you have to do is slide that into the hole where the other one came out of. There's a nylon nut that will go on the bottom. You want to hand tighten that. And then once you get it hand tightened, I usually go about another quarter turn with a pair of pliers to make sure it's in tight and it won't leak. Okay, now that we have the tank fill valve in, we're going to be hooking up. This is the bowl fill. This actually clips on top up here. What I like to do is attach the line to that first. Once you have the line attached to that, you're going to want to set it in here so that the fill part goes down here. That clips on just like that. And then this loops around and attaches to the top of the fill valve. Now that you have the tank fully assembled, the next thing we're going to do is reconnect the water line. It's a good idea to replace your water line every five to six years. All you need to do is get that about hand tight and then crank it down another quarter turn and that should be secure and not leak. Now once you turn the water back on 
and you start to fill the tank up, you're going to want to adjust your float level and your shutoff level to fit your tank. If you have a really tall tank, you can move this. All you have to do is slide this ring up like that, and then this whole assembly will be able to slide up higher and move this float up higher to give you a higher fill level. Once you get it to the right level, all you have to do is slide that back down and it locks it into place on there. Well, congratulations on another job well done. You've just rebuilt your entire toilet with all new seals, new valves, and new water line. It should give you many years of trouble-free flushing. Thanks for watching.